Hi there, and welcome to Lee's Play. While you may normally find me doing gaming Let's Plays, I decided instead today to teach you Lara Croft fans on how to make your own Tomb Raider levels using this new open source engine called Tomb Engine. In the year 2000, with the release of Tomb Raider Chronicles, game developers' core design gave users the tools to make their own levels. Over the years, that has resulted in thousands of fan levels being made. However, as time has gone on and computers and technology has evolved, the core design tools struggle to work on modern computers. Some fan of the custom levels may even struggle to play newer versions with their computers' antivirus software triggering a false positive. That makes gamers reluctant to download them. However, a team of game developers led by a user named Amonti has created a new suite of Tomb Raider level editing tools based around the classic Tomb Raider game engine, and it's called Tomb Engine. It looks a lot like classic Tomb Raider, but under the hood, there's been a lot of quality of life improvements. That includes removing the PlayStation 1 limitations and many other restrictions, and that allows new builders and fans to dream up even more epic adventures for Lara Croft. I'll be making a series of videos that will take you from zero to hero, showing you how to make your own Tomb Raider levels with absolutely no experience. My only recommendation is that you've actually played a classic Tomb Raider game so you understand how the game works on some level and how Lara Croft moves. A disclaimer, these are all free open source tools that are not made by Crystal Dynamics or any other professional game developer. For that reason, as the game engine updates and changes, new features will be introduced, but potentially new bugs as well. For that reason, I will not be providing technical support or answer any technical support questions in the comments. Tomb Engine has a Discord where you can personally talk to the developers themselves and ask them questions. And there is a link in the video description to access that server should you need help. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and download Tomb Editor by heading to tombengine.com. There is no Mac or Linux version. You must use a Microsoft Windows computer running at least Windows 7. I will be using Windows 10. Choose the version of Tomb Editor that suits the computer you have, whether using 32-bit Windows or 64-bit Windows. During installation, you may be asked to download and install .NET 6, which is a software library by Microsoft. Agreeing to do so will take you to the official Microsoft website where you can download it, and it's completely safe to install this software onto your computer. Once the installation is completed, you should find new icons on your desktop and start menu. Let's go ahead and open Tomb IDE, and this is where we can get started and actually start building our level. We're going to create a new project. This will be our first project. And we first have to give it a name. So I'm going to call this my first level. The next is a project location. Where do you want to install it? Many people might install it onto a Dropbox or an iCloud drive. However, for this tutorial, I'm just going to install it on my desktop by pressing browse, pressing desktop and pressing select folder. Now it's going to ask you what engine type you'd like to use. While there are other options available, including Tomb Raider 1, Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3, and Tomb Raider 4, and something called Tomb Raider Next Generation, we're going to be using Tomb Engine Beta. Then click Next, use default settings, and create. The project has been successfully installed. Press OK. Now we'll be brought back to the main menu, and as you can see, you now have a selection to click on your first level. You're going to be brought to a new user interface, so while it may look like a lot at first, I'm going to introduce it to you step by step and on a needs no basis. So you learn how to use it slowly but steady. This is called the level manager, and this would be where you'd manage your levels. For example, you can create a complete Tomb Raider game in this engine with several levels, not just one. However, as this is a new project, we have no levels. So ignoring every other button on the user interface, we're going to look at level list and then press the plus to create a new level. Let's give the level a name. I'm going to be teaching you how to create one of Tomb Raider's most iconic levels in the entire franchise, the Lost Valley, also known as the level where you run into the infamous T-Rex. So for that reason, I'm going to call it Prehistoric Jungle. However, do feel free to call it the Lost Valley if you wish to. Don't touch any other buttons, including this, Ambient Sound ID or Horizon. I will explain that to you at a later point when necessary. Simply press the Create button. Now that you created it, you might have seen that a little red highlighter had emerged over this button called Scripting Studio. That was to indicate that a new file had been made that was related to Prehistoric Jungle. Let's casually check out the Scripting Studio. When you go onto Scripting Studio, you're going to see something called Gameflow.lua. 
Lua is actually an industry standard scripting language, and that's very exciting, as this will allow builders to create really epic games with custom gameplay mechanics that's never seen before in any Tomb Raider game. For now, though, we only have one job, and that's to press save, and that's because this hasn't been saved since we created a new level, and we need to save it because this has been added to the script that allows you to play your new level. So just press save by pressing the floppy disk icon, or you can also go up to file and save. While this may look confusing at first, all I've asked you to do was press save, and now we're gonna go back to safety and go back to the level manager. Let's go ahead and double click, and this will bring you into Tomb Editor. Tomb Editor is the modern version of something called the Windows Room Edit, which was the official tool supplied by Core Design over 20 years ago that allowed you to build custom Tomb Raider levels. This is a lot more modern and runs on modern computers. While the user interface may look daunting, it's quite easy to use and I'm going to teach you it on a need to know basis. So while there's a lot of buttons and a lot of icons, you will eventually learn what every bit of them means and you'll learn them slowly so you understand the proper functions of each button, command and control. The first thing that's going to be apparent is that there's a big room in front of you. You can actually move the rotation of the room by using the arrows on your keyboard so you can get a view of it from 360 degrees. To make a level we're going to need textures. Textures are a collection of images that we're going to place on the map that allows you to create the environment for Lara Croft to run around in. Textures will include snow, grass, every wall she can climb, that's a texture. For this tutorial I've supplied you with high definition textures from the Peru section of the original Tomb Raider game and there's a link in the description to download them. If you follow the link in the video description to download the textures, you should find them in the downloads folder on your computer. I'm actually going to go ahead and move them into that level folder that's on my desktop. The reason for this is that we want to keep our folders organized so we never lose track of our textures, our objects, our sound, our music, and I'll explain more about that later on, and that's called asset management. But for starters, let's just open levels, let's open prehistoric jungle, and I'm going to drag the texture document in there just so that we don't ever lose it. It's not going to go in the downloads folder and be accidentally deleted. It's going to all be contained in this My First Level folder and you know yourself to never delete that folder. As I mentioned before, Dropbox and iCloud Drive are also really great places to save your file just in case you ever accidentally delete it. If you choose not to use an online service, then I highly recommend you make regular backups of your game at all times, whether it's every day or every week. That can be done as simple as pressing copy and pasting the folder in a new location or on a new backup hard drive. So let's go back to Tomb Editor and let's load in our textures. To load in textures, we're going to see the texturing panel right here and we're going to press the plus to add a texture. We're going to locate the texture folder and we're going to import all of them. You can drag your mouse to select all three files and press open. You should soon see that the side panel is now populated with textures of all different varieties. I've curated this for you so we can all create the same level together because we're going to be recreating again the Lost Valley from Tomb Raider 1. These are actually official Tomb Raider 1 textures. These were released with the iPhone and iPad port of Tomb Raider over 10 years ago when they had high definition textures. Another great benefit of Tomb Engine is that it does allow high definition textures. Classic Tomb Raider textures used to be considered 64 pixels by 64 pixels. However, with the new Tomb Engine, you can also go up to 256 by 256 textures, and that can be selected by pressing this button here. That indicates the selection tile size, and all textures that I've provided to you today are 256 by 256 pixels. If you press anywhere on a texture, a box will form, and that will allow you to select a texture and apply to your level. As you can see, I've curated many textures for you to use, which will allow the map to have a lot of variety, which is a lot more visually interesting for you to build and also for the player to enjoy. We have everything from rock textures to cement, to stone, to grass, to other variations of grass, and we even have some snow textures if you wish to create a snowy environment for Lara, like the beginning of the Tomb Raider game when she's in the caves. In temple textures, we have something that you'd find more in a tomb, like hieroglyphs, and textures where you may place something like levers. Water textures are a special type of texture that we will be applying, you know, to certain sections of the level, for example, where Lara wants to swim. We also have some waterfall textures, as the Lost Valley infamously has waterfalls, and eventually I'm going to teach you how to do all of this. 
When you click on any texture, the regular shape for it to form is a box. However, this can be manipulated into many other shapes. However, for the time being, the textures we're going to be applying are simple box squares like this. Now, before we get started and actually start building the level, what we actually want to do is make sure that what we have so far is working. So to do that, what we're going to do are apply simple textures to this map. I want you to select this texture at the top left corner, press textures in the menu, and press texture walls. As you can see, nothing has happened. That's because we have to change the view of the UI to show you textures. Up here, you can see several different buttons. We have 2D, which brings up a 2D map, and I'll explain that to you at a later point. 3D, which is considered geometry mode. We have face edit mode, which we, if you press, there you go, you can see some textures. And we also have a lighting mode, which I'll explain to you also at a later point. Lighting mode is very important as that allows you to create really atmospheric levels and levels without light look quite bad. There's also a draw untextured in lighting mode. However, I'll explain that to you at a more advanced part of this tutorial. Go back to face edit mode. And as you can see, this texture on the top left has been applied to every face on this map. I want you to scroll down in this user interface and start getting used to it, the texturing toolbar. And I want you to find a grass texture and I want you to apply it. I like this piece here. We're going to select that and we're going to press textures and we're going to press texture floor. Lastly, we need to paint the ceiling. I'm going to select this texture here and go to textures and press texture ceiling. And if I move the mouse, you can see that the ceiling has now been painted. So we have a box of textures on the ground, on the walls and on the ceiling, quite like a house if you ever played The Sims. The next thing I want you to do is go to geometry mode, which will turn off the textures, but don't worry, they haven't gone anywhere, they're still there. And actually what I'd like you to do is to press the plus button right beside this picture of Lara Croft. You can actually zoom in and see it's Lara, it's, you know, it's called Lara. I simply want you to press the plus button and add her to anywhere on the map. And as you can see, Lara has been added there. I'm not gonna press any other button. Now I want you to go to file and press save level. Now what we're actually gonna do is build, compile and play this level. We actually haven't built anything, but I want to make sure that what you have so far is working. So press the play button up here and the level will start to compile and will immediately launch the Tomb Engine, which will allow you to play this level. Since this may be the first time you've ever used Tomb Engine, you're gonna be shown the setup screen. You should select the screen resolution of your computer. I'm on a 4K monitor, so I'm gonna select this button. I'm going to disable window mode. I'm going to make sure that my speakers are selected and I'm gonna press OK. All going well, the game should load in and you should see Lara Croft right on your screen and you can control right away and see the room that you've just built and textured. As I said before, there's absolutely nothing going on here, but if you see this, that's a really good sign because it means you followed the tutorial correctly and you've installed it correctly and you've created your first level properly and there's nothing wrong under the hood. If you're able to move Lara around like this, that will make things a lot easier going forward if there's ever any troubleshooting issues that you have to do on your end. Feel free to have a play around, especially if you've never played a Tomb Raider game before, although I sure hope you have. You can take Lara's guns out and shoot and she'll basically be Lara Croft. To pause the game, press P on your keyboard, go to exit to title, and then press exit game and that will bring it back to the Tomb Editor. So while we haven't built anything yet, we're at a really good point as it means you're able to create a level and we know what works. We know that the game works, we know that the tools work, and now we can actually go forward and start crafting the level. While it may seem like a boring place to end the video, that is where I'm going to end it because that means we have successfully completed setting up Tomb Engine and getting started, which means in the next video we can actually get into building the level. Thank you so much for watching. There should be a playlist on my channel that will allow you to access all the tutorials that I've published up until present day. And I will see you in the next tutorial when we'll actually get started in building a level. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe for future videos and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.